how can we address big environmental problems like climate change? Most of us start with our own daily lives, with everyday behaviors and choices about what we consume and how we get around. Like Puneet, who makes a point of not using a car. The reason I use transit is because even if I'm not using it, I'm still paying for it through property tax, carbon tax. I, I might as well utilize those uh, public assets compared to driving, right? There's just such a big benefit. If they're going to run no matter what, then you might as well take them. Puneet lives in Delta and commutes by transit to school where he's studying business. He values living in a community where the services he needs, now and in the future, are easy to access. My area's design is such a really great way where there's the schools nearby, the grocery stores nearby, the elementary school nearby, the bus stop is nearby, the medical services plans are nearby, recreation services are nearby. So because of those services, I want to make sure my, I live in that area. Meet Tanya. She lives in North Vancouver and works in industrial real estate. Tanya also tries to be less dependent on driving and finds what she needs close to home. She wants to help other people learn about the ways our everyday decisions relate to sustainability. One of my volunteer initiatives this year is to teach children how to grow their own gardens. It's called Growing Chefs, and so uh, every two weeks I go to the classroom and teach grade two to three year olds um, with a group of chefs. We just teach them about you know, what it takes to grow a garden. And then at the end, we actually make stir fry with um, the garden that we've grown. So what stops us from being green? Why don't more of us take these kinds of steps in our everyday lives? And how much can we do by ourselves? Yeah, and I think one of the, the challenges too is that when you start talking about environmentalism, people kind of turn off, right? You're kind of labeled, there's that environmentalist label that I think people steer clear of because I don't know if the history is too preachy or, you know, they don't feel they measure up or they don't consider themselves environmentalists. Many of us want to live our green values, but maybe we aren't sure where to start or worry that we aren't doing enough. I think that uh, people shut in because they see a list of things that they should be doing you know and there's lots of information about there you should do this 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 and this and this and uh, you're gonna throw up your hands because there's there's too much um, I can't do all that I think if we have the sense that we have to be perfect in order to start nobody's ever gonna start doing anything I also sometimes struggle with figuring out what I can do as an individual and um, I try to make good choices, but sometimes it's just really hard. I guess we don't all have the, the luxury and the resources um, to be sustainable all the time. There are limits to what any of us can do alone, but does that mean that we should give up? We need to really recognize that we are a group and we are collectively needing to make choices and decisions together and that yeah, regardless of whether we're here in Canada and in Port Moody, um, our choices and our actions do impact people across the globe and across the country. And that to, to pretend otherwise is just a privilege that we have. I think it's not just like we need as individuals to make choices about the environment, but like we as a society need to make choices that enable other people to make choices about the environment. Mm -hmm.